Thanks, and welcome to our session on Working Technicians Tell Their Stories. My name is Greg Kepner, and I'm a co-PI with the Micro Nano Technology Education Center. I have with me today Professor Shirley Dobbins of Hillsborough Community College and Dr. Marilyn Barger of the Florida Advanced Technology Education Center, as well as Chow Tran, who is a working technician and a current student at Hillsborough Community College. This session will provide an opportunity for working technicians to share their experiences about attending community college and technical college programs that prepare them for their positions. Uh, some of the topics we'll talk about is the role of uh, math, science, and key knowledge, skills, and abilities needed for success, and what worked well and what didn't work so well in their technician education, what they wish they had learned in college, barriers to success and their strategy, strategies to overcome them. And uh, these working technicians are either students in or recent graduates of ATE programs. So I'm going to ask Chow to uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, well, first uh, her name and what degree she is working on at and in the institution she's attending and then where she's working, where it's located, her job title, and what are her responsibilities there. So uh, Chow, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to you now. So my name is Chow Tran, and I'm currently a student at uh, Hillsborough Community College, uh, finishing up my engineering technology AS degree. And um, I should be graduating after this summer semester. Um, so right now I'm also working as a mechanical design intern for Adams in Tampa, Florida. Um, my job duty um, comprise of like um, AutoCAD and solid work design. I do a um, detailed drawing in both solid work and AutoCAD. Um, I also do a lot of design for 3D printing and uh, I also help with um, create assembly and helping with the assembly process sometime when we do integration project uh, in the company. So, yeah. Okay, great. How did you uh, become interested in this field? One of my friend teaches uh, a CPT course. Uh, his name is Eric Fernandez. I know Mrs. Dobbins know about him. Uh, so he introduced me to this program and I thought it's a great program is um, it has courses that are very um, hands-on, which I really appreciate, and very practical, as well as mathematical skill and all those things. And I think that the professors are great as well. We have, um, we, we also have a, a very good lab um, room for us to practice what we learn. And so that's the reason why I chose this program. I know it's a good program and I'll be able to find good employment afterwards. Excellent. When, when did that actually happen? Did it happen like right after high school or uh, did you no, work no, for a while? I, I came, I lived overseas for a while. And when I came back, I wanted to change my career field. And that's where I got in touch with my friend and he just introduced me to this program. It's like a smooth transition into it. Fantastic. Uh, were there any high school experiences that contributed to your choice? I, I took a lot of um, AP courses that relate to science and math, also other courses. Um, so those are the things that, that, that I felt when I look at the program courses, I felt like I'm, I'm capable of taking them on and, and finishing the program. It won't be too, too difficult for me. Uh, it's challenging for sure because uh, of the amount of information and also amount of technology that, that keep changing. And the one thing great about ACC is that we have great machines. We have robot, we have CMM, we have CNC, I mean, you name it. And so I feel like it's, it's a great thing to be able to, to update my skill. Fantastic. Uh, what, what challenges have you faced in, in college? Oh, challenges, I think, um, and it's not really bad, but the labs are great challenge, I think. Lab work can be very challenging in the sense that they, 
they are time consuming because you really have to learn a skill. So that's the one thing great about a lab is that they, we don't just breeze through them. We have to make sure we get the skill down and we get the support from the professor and also the technician. So it's not like we're doing it on our own and not learning anything. As a matter of fact, we learn so much. I learned a lot from my lab. Um, I, I would say 50 to 75% of what I learned is on the lab work. And so that's the most challenging thing for me. The theoretical part is something that I can grasp. And then transitioning that into a practical skill and really getting it down is, is a very challenging part for, that, for this program. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> were there, did you have any favorite classes or any favorite particular class? Sure, I have um, AutoCAD. I have solid work. Um, that's part of the, the job, the duty of a job that I do because I, I really like those courses. Um, I also like GDNT, which I'm taking right now. So those are the three courses that I really enjoy. Would you say those were the most helpful? Absolutely. I use it all the time at work, um, a lot in AutoCAD and solid work. And I'm still learning a lot in those two software because I feel like um, that's just so much, you know, there's advanced and technique uh, and intermediate skills that I'm still trying to grasp and learn as I, I do my job. Okay, now on the other side of things, were there any classes that you felt were sort of a waste of time or weren't very helpful? Not at all, because I feel like I, the, the program really quick and fast and there's so much to learn. I wish I can learn more. There's <laughs> nothing really that I don't use at work from lean manufacturing to safety, to production, to measuring anything. So that I feel like I wish I could take more classes. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so you say you wish you could take more classes. What, what could the college do or add to make your program of study more helpful or more valuable? Well, my personal experience is that I wish I can take more um, classes in solid works that are a bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, also, also PLC in a way, I was introduced to PLC and, and Professor Smith is great. I learned a lot from that, um, but I wish I could take a, a higher level course in order to do more complicated programming because I see that our electrical engineer in where I work, they do use a lot of PLC. And just being able to understand what a ladder logic is, is very important. And being able to, to, um, to program it, I, in a more complicated um, application will be very useful. So I think those are the two courses, those are the two things that I wish I could be uh, learning more. Okay, sure. How well uh, has your education prepared you for this position that you're in now? I think it's a great trans um, preparation. Like I said, I use everything that I learn in class um, in my work. Obviously there are there's much more focus in designing because that's where my internship lies. But things like GDNT or, I, don't, I do not use PLC so much in, in, in my work because it's not my concentration, but we do talk about it. We do discuss about it within the project. So that's the one thing that having the technical background in all of those courses from electro, electromechanical course uh, to PLC, to GDNT, to designing, to lean process. All of those things are, give me a very strong background, if I may say. Okay. So uh, what does the job market look like for, you, you say you, you're going to graduate this at the end of the summer term, you think? Yes, sir. And what's the, what does the job market look like for you? Well, I have, um, I have had two interviews so far. Um, one is with uh, Adams. I, I was um, off for a full-time position. I'm still in the process of transitioning into that. Um, I recently also had an interview with another company in a, a nearby city, St. Pete. So I feel like it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's opening. There are definitely things out there for me to, 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 to be employed. Fantastic. I, 
At this point, I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Professor Shirley Dobbins for some questions. Okay. Uh, Trin, Child Trin, how have you, have you had any additional training or educational um, additions since you entered the workforce, since you started Adams, have you got additional training there? I, so I had a lot of training, not a lot, but as in like, I'm still being trained in the, the kind of aluminum material called 8020, which uh, people use a lot to create you know, different source of furniture or base or anything like that. So it's, it's a whole different thing that we don't get to study at school because it is a kind of product. So using my mechanical design and also learning about what kind of products that are available in 8020 is um, working together. So I'm being trained in how to design things from 8020. Also, I'm trained to um, printing thing in a 3D printer. There's a lot more to it than I thought about. Um, you know, we, we use that a lot because we do a lot of design in-house and sometimes I design things and I print them out. And it's, it takes a bit of learning and experience to know how to print and what axis is the best. Um, so those are the kind of things that I'm being trained in. Okay, so which part of your job do you enjoy the most? I enjoy designing on AutoCAD and solid work. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's challenging, but it's, it's great. Oh, so that's good you said that. It says, now what's the most part, what's the part of your job that is most challenging? <laughs> it's that part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's that part. It's, um, for example, we having a project where um, I have to redesign a bracket, a frame for, um, for a universal robot. So this is a second edition and we want to be able to use uh, our 3D printer, which is a smaller one. And so we have to redesign it in a way that we can cut the big part into two or three small parts and then put them together. So it, it takes a bit of redesigning and how to put these things to, to, together. So it, it was a bit challenging at first, but I like it so far. Thank you. All right, Chow, I'm going to take over and ask a couple of questions about what do you think you're going to do next? So we're going to graduate this summer, which is awesome. And um, maybe take this full time job. I think you're thinking about it at, at Adams. But do you have any you know, future career plans or do you see any continued education down yeah, the road? As a matter of fact, I uh, apply for um, uh, engineering technology BS degree at Daytona State College. Oh, awesome. It, so I'm going to transition into that program in the fall right after I finish with HCC. But it's, a, it's an online program and it, I'm, I plan to study part-time and work full-time now. So for me, it's a great transition, quick, fast, and it's still an engineering AT degree. Oh, awesome. That, that sounds great. Is there a particular specialty you have to choose um, in that four-year program, or are you just going to wait and see what what the options are and what you like when you get started? I know that happens to many of us as students. <laughs> right. Well, when I look at the program, they have a few, uh, they have, certainly they have core courses and the elective are geared toward thing like manufacturing or construction. For me, mm. I would like to focus on manufacturing simply okay. because I like it more. And it's also because I'm, I'm already in that kind of environment. Um, that's, that's great. And I think Raphael has um, joined us. But you want, I think, uh, first of all, Greg's going to close up since we're almost done. Hello, Thanks everyone. A lot. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Raphael Cedros. And uh, I'm an ET, stu uh, ET student uh, in HCC, and uh, I currently um, I'm working in Bush Gardens as a maintenance. And basically, it's a ride technician, and uh, it's a um, it's a learning experience for me and also for everyone, like my for myself, because I, I never had that experience, but they included my automotive experience and uh, and uh, I was used to work at Hyundai dealership for nearly seven years and they 
they said, wow, you had that much experience. And, and so basically I qualified as a maintenance uh, to be working as a, as a ride technician. But uh, as and currently I'm, in, I'm focusing in uh, vehicle maintenance. That's, that's my knowledge of automotive. So they accepted me right away, and everything was was was, was everything was in history. Like for me to be working as a vehicle maintenance in Bush Gardens, and I see that the my degree I'm willing to go to my bachelor's degree in Daytona State College. They have it on fully online, and uh, that work that would work for my work, my job. And also schooling, and also it, it basically um, it balances, you know. <laughs> but yeah. Raphael, how did how did you become interested in this field? How come uh, interested? Ever since I high school, I always wanted to be an engineer, but I didn't know what path. So luckily, <clears throat> when I started in HCC, basically. Um, Miss Dobbins, I was a Hope Scholar, and what um, Dr. Gonza uh, referred me to Miss um, Dobbins, and basically to give me knowledge about what's engineering. And one thing she's always told me, if you cannot do engineering, there's always engineering technology. And, uh, uh, and one other thing she gave me knowledge about engineering technology from uh, it, it took me that to me to that path and i was like i'm gonna give it a shot and try my very best and ever since then it basically gave me i'm almost done and this summer i will be graduating and so i'm very happy with my my choice so are you currently is it an internship or is it a full-time job now it's a part-time job and okay. it's basically training it's like, uh, you know, apprenticeship, basically uh, with that is basically um, you're above uh, apprenticeship. And uh, one of the things I noticed that uh, they told me that I was like, is there apprenticeship for this, uh, uh, this career? And, and uh, they told me, no, they used to had it at the beginning, but they, uh, they wanted to go to this path of having a part-time position and uh, to train us, and then uh, eventually uh, we would have uh, already have the two year, uh, ab a two year, and we just need one more year to be, basically you could go for, there's different areas you could go to, rides, and which which you could be um, a, a, a ride technician for Shikra, Cheetah, Montu, and all that, but, as far as I know, it's a part-time position. And does it look like this will lead into a full-time position when you graduate? Yes, that's my goal. And uh, as far as I know, they in the rides they they had three person they quit the job that position. And I, once I heard that, I was like, I'm looking for the the full-time position. Once I apply for that position, and I was like, wow. It's a you know a blessing to see that happening in the, in a way that you know basically I could go apply for the full time position once it opens. Okay, great. What tell me what uh, what challenges have you faced while in college? While in college, because I have a learning disability, I have a speech and language disability, and uh, one of the things that made made me focus in my area of uh, crafts uh, to never give up and to continue keep going my, one of my mentors is Shirley Dobbins Miss Miss Dobbins and she always pushes me is that keep going you can do this never give up and basically keep going forward in life and because like you never know where you're gonna fall through where you're gonna fall through in life and but you once you get your your life going and knowing what you want, you can you can do it. Well, it sounds like you've had good, strong support there at yes. Hillsborough Community College. That's that's yes. great. You can never underestimate the importance of a of a professor that's really mm -hmm. helpful. 
Yes, very true. And also, um, one of the things that keeps me going is my my family, and also and also keep going. And also, Miss Dobbins always keeps pushing me. And that's another encouragement. And also, my my fiance was just recently got engaged, and now uh, and also one of the things that motivates me is, is her because she finished with her masters, and that keeps driving me to go even do better as well. Fantastic, fantastic. What did did you have any particular favorite classes or particular class at college? Uh, yes, uh, currently I'm taking CAD for engineering, and basically. One of the things that I noticed that you you are creating a AutoCAD and you have to create and uh, shapes you have to create uh, objects that you know that uh, can be challenging you know and so that's one of the things my, one of my favorite classes and also electrical that's another uh, grasp that that I can learn for continuous uh, years and maintenance because you're always gonna learn about electrical, you're always gonna learn PLC, programming logic uh, controls. And that was another class I, I liked it a lot as well, because uh, one of the last projects, it was uh, flashlights, the, the not the flashlights, sorry, um, the signal lights, like for the traffic lights, my bad. It, it was the traffic lights. That was a very challenging uh, uh, project to do and, but yeah. Okay. What is there anything that your college could do to make your program of study even more helpful or more valuable? I feel like one of the things like I noticed in my job, they have welding. Like I would like that we would have a welding courses as well. Mm -hmm. I wish that we could have because like one thing things I try to uh, apply uh, like applying to other jobs, they also include welding. And one is maintenance, because like I wish that they they had that w w uh, for us to improve. And, like, sure. Because yeah. like if say like for myself, like I want to be into maintenance for many years as a long career. Uh, I would suggest like a welding will be a good intro, a good choice for us to learn even more in engineering technology. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet you'll have chances to take some welding classes. Yes, sir. <laughs> future. Yes, sir. Uh, so how, how well has your college prepared you for this job that you're in now? Uh, how they prepared? Uh, well, well, I would say the learning courses of electrical and uh, also also other classes of mine was uh, um, like something about management as well, like how to be a manager and basically it, it, it basically uh, includes me to be to improve my uh, my task my uh, basically to to continue to be better and uh, one of the things that um I'm not sure like how to say but I guess it's like never and like never give up and so you would try to improve in those areas. I would say. <laughs> oh, sounds good. What What does the job market look like for when you graduate? Does it look like a pretty strong market? Yes, it's a very strong market, I would say, because like there's always jobs for us. And uh, one of the things that I noticed that the Tampa International Airport, they have job opportunities for us. And um, and uh, Bush Gardens always have jobs. Um, Disney has jobs for us, but there's uh, it's this very strong market. Like there's always going to be jobs for us for many many years coming on. Okay. I guess things always break down, so you have to be repaired. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Marilyn, would you like to take over for a minute? Okay. Yep. Really <laughs> We're sharing the area. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So, so Raphael, have you had additional training or education since you entered the workforce? What training did you get there at Bush Garden? Um, it was my my training for uh, my automotive training. I used to do an, uh, an at Orlando 
and uh, basically from that training, uh, continue to be Hyundai dealership for many, many years for me. And also for that task, um, basically opened the doors for me for Bush Gardens and and uh, so, mo so on, so forth. And uh, basically it, it led me to this job at Bush Gardens. Okay. What part of your job do you enjoy the most? Enjoy that part of enjoying the most. Well, we're working on vehicles that I I never worked on, like for instance, Fords, um, uh, tractors, uh, forklifts, golf carts, and you name it. That we basically worked on. You can't believe it. we also work on them in, the, in my workforce. While you're at Bush Gardens working, what part of your job is the most challenging? The most challenging. Well. Like yesterday, I had to do a steering column I never done before at a Ford because I'm just so used to Hyundai because it's very easy to work on. It's very not complicated, but it is doable. And that was the challenge for me to to overcome it and never give up and try to complete the job and, and basically finish the job and let the our our fellow co-workers uh, that we can let them have the vehicle and basically can operate it okay thank you marilyn you have some questions about the future i do so what um kind of trends and innovations do you see coming into your work and might be new tools new softwares new whatever that you might be technologies that will enter your work at bush gardens well, I believe um, in my workforce is like, um, there's no training. That's what I was told, but they used to have training for it. So like, basically I wish that they have a training course that included uh, like of maintenance, like how to how to operate our, our, our tools, say like for instance, for our scans, to mm -hmm. scan the, scan the, uh, the vehicle, to scan the uh, the golf carts to better operate them and basically to go forward and uh, basically to learn that material and, and keep going uh, forth. Okay. I think you talked about this a little bit already, um, your future career plans. And you talked about going on to school mm -hmm. at Daytona State, continuing on. Yes. And um, so do you see any, any other parts of your career path branching off other yeah. things you'd like to do yes i would like to do my masters um, uh, uh, for that i would have to do one step at a time and do my ba my bachelor's degree in uh, engineering technology and focus on maintenance and basically for my masters it would be engineering management for, for concentrating on maintenance if there's a a, a schooling that has um, that concept can concentrate. If no, I would have to do the general studies uh, for uh, engineering management. Okay. Oh, awesome. Sounds like a great plan. Yes. Great plan going forward. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Greg? Yes, I'd like to uh, finish up by asking both of you uh, if you have any advice for young people that are considering their education and career opportunities, and let's, let's ask Chow to, to start us off on that question. I think if anyone that, that are into um, hands-on um, experiences, learning, and have an aptitude for math or science or machine, and they're not so sure about exactly what what path they want to take further down the road, I think this is a great program because you get exposed to so much disciplines, electrical design or maintenance, all of those things and PLC. So I feel like with this program, you, you get a hands-on experience and you get a feel for what you, your, you know, your inclination is. And I think that's, that's a great way to start and figure out exactly what you want to focus on down the road. Great, thank you. Uh, Raphael, same question. Do you have any advice for young people considering their education and, and career opportunities? 
Well, if it's a uh, engineering technology, of course, like there's always open for students to, like to come in and and uh, to focus on in in our uh, uh, like basically um, our major because like it's open for everyone, of course. Like uh, like if you don't understand something, like say like math. Of course, Ms. Dom is more welcome to help you and uh, and to 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 her to succeed and that. And uh, also, if there there are hands on, just like for myself, hands on, and like it's a great opportunity to be in the in that uh, degree because it'll learn the material like for another like m m Mr. Smith will also help you with electrical. He's he he's a a great a great uh, person to ask any electrical uh, advice like and so on and so forth. And but but Mr. Stavans will also help you with anything you need, and uh, which will direct you the right path to to succeed of the electrical. I mean, to the engineering technology courses like. Will will guide you which courses to take, which not to take, if and, and what areas you like. But so far, uh, I would I suggest like let it give a shot of elect an uh, engineering technology because it would change uh, for many years to come. And also in the work atmosphere, like I feel like there's a there's a bro there's a broad uh, uh, to learn of engineering technology. There's different choices you could choose. You could choose electrical, there's chemical, there's mechanical, there's that, but and engineering technology is more, is very broad. Uh, so you're not learning one thing, you're learning multiple things. Great, thank you. And is there anything else either of you'd like to share? I don't wanna miss anything. If there's something else that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share. Let's see. If not, that's fine. I, I really want to thank you for participating in, in our session today. It's been very, very helpful. And a special thanks to you and to Hillsborough Community College for uh, what they've done for you. And of course, to Professor Shirley Dobbins and, and Dr. Marilyn Barger for participation today in the session. And uh, so again, thank you very much. We appreciate it and wish you well in your in your finishing your studies and in your careers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you for um, participating today and telling us your stories. It's great to hear. Yes. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.